In this session, we're going to look at the Tabor pipe itself in detail and try and understand how it works. This session won't really help you with any practical information on how to play it, but it helps to understand the magic of the instrument. First of all, it's a strange thing. It looks like a tin whistle. This is a generation Tabor pipe. It looks like a tin whistle, but it only has three holes, two on the front and one on the back. Yet, it can play so many notes. The generation Tabor pipe is just that. It's a tin whistle that's missing some of the holes. And here to uh, compare is a generation whistle and a generation Tabor pipe uh, next to each other. And we'll look in detail at that. Um, the holes are in exactly the same place as the uh, on the Tabor pipe as they are on the tin whistle. Just one of them's moved around the back. So here to, to demonstrate how similar they are, I've got uh, a Tabor pipe and a tin whistle with the top three holes covered up with a bit of tape and uh, thus turning it into a Tabor pipe. And uh, let's see how we can get them sound. So there we can see the tabor pipe and the whistle are really quite closely related. But anyway, let's have a look, close look at how the tabor pipe works. Well, the tabor pipe is what we call an overtone flute. And overtone flutes work on breath pressure. So if I blow into the mouthpiece, the air goes through the airway and splits across the, the splitter in the window here, and that excites the air in the tube and makes it sound according to the length of the tube. So we'll get this tone. Now with an overtone flute, you blow harder and it excites it a bit more. I can blow harder still. Each time I blow harder, we get a higher note. Now physicists will tell you all about harmonics and partials, but uh, we don't need to call, know about that. We'd call them overtones. So you get the, the root note, and then the first overtone, second overtone, third, fourth, and fifth, if you can go for it. So we've established that the tabor pipe, um, if you've got all the finger holes closed, you can get four or five notes. By blowing harder, that would give you, well, an interesting set of notes to play some tunes on. But quite boring tunes, really, and quite odd tunes. The Tabor pipe has these finger holes and that opens up fantastic uh, opportunities. So I can get my overtones with all the fingers closed and then I can open one finger and get a different set. And the next finger. And the thumb. All a bit odd, really, um, a strange sets of harmonics or, or overtones, but put them together and you can get a whole scale. You can go further. So there you are. It's, <laughs> it's, it's an instrument of physics, really, and uh, you can play all those notes, all those harmonics and partials and Oh, incredible stuff. Uh, and actually, when it comes down to it, when you're playing, you never think about that stuff at all. That's all way too complicated. That is just theory. Uh, playing the instrument is actually a lot, lot simpler. But um, as I said at the beginning, 
this session isn't really about uh, teaching you anything about how to play the instrument, but it does help to explain the instrument a bit. And um, it might come in useful sometime when you're out in public and uh, there you are playing on your pipe and tabba and there's a bystander completely awestruck by this sheer artistry on a little pipe with only using two fingers and a thumb and you're getting all of those notes. Incredible really.